Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to try to get started here on time so we can get everybody out, hopefully before it gets dark. Uh, I'd like to uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance, so if I could get everyone to stand, the flag is right here behind me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. If I could ask you please just stand for a moment of silence for our troops. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to start. Uh, Commission President Mark Anderson has a few remarks before the PowerPoint gets going, so I'll turn it over to Mark. Really want to welcome everyone here. Uh, I think we're going to have an informative meeting and it, we're going to have questions and answers as well. Uh, just thanks for coming. Uh, this is uh, all a part of trying to convey information uh, to the public uh, and uh, get answers to all the questions. So I'm going to sit down and let the people who know what they're talking about continue. Okay, thank you, Mark. Our format for tonight, we've got a PowerPoint that is really quite short. <laughs> we've only got a few slides. We just want to kind of go through uh, where we're at to date and what the what the steps are moving forward. Uh, <clears throat> we've got uh, some friends from the Chester Y here. Uh, Deborah Langseth is a, did I pronounce it right? Langseth is a, is a new executive director there. So she's going to say a few words as well. So with that, I'm going to get started with the PowerPoint. I'm going to step out here so I can actually see the screen. So just make sure you guys are at the right place. This is the informational meeting for the Chester Y House at 325 State Street. So I wanna give you a status of the project and the grant funds. I think uh, everyone in this room probably knows the history here, so we won't delve too deeply into it. Uh, just to say that October of 2016, uh, there was an MOU with Haven Ministries for the site, and Haven Ministries elected not to sign, so that ended the shelter plans for 325 State Street. Shortly after that, uh, in November, I got had a call from um, call from the folks at, at Chester Y. Wheeler Baker called and said, hey, you know, Chester Y is looking to expand. We need some more homes. Do you guys have any property that you'd be interested in? And we said, well, as a matter of fact, we might. So why don't you come on by? So so Wheeler came by and Deborah came by and uh, Mr. Knight came by and we sat down and talked about some of the options. And, and this seemed like a viable option as long as it was something that the community was okay with and the state was okay with with regard to the grant. So in December of last year, we went back to the commissioners and said, hey, listen, I, we, we think we found a very viable use for this property. We think we can get the building a lot smaller than it was proposed to be, and we can get a group in there that's got a very strong uh, commitment to the community and a good history. And so they were, they were excited about it. We went back to the state and said, listen, this is where we're at. We know we've got some grant funds left. Can we move forward? And they said, yes, this, 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 fits, with, this fits in the requirements for the grant. So then in January of this year, just a few months ago, this housing authority who owned the property deeded the property back to the county so that they were out of it entirely. So it, it no longer became a housing authority property or issue. So the two grants that we had received for it, the, the first grant, the CDBG, which is a community development block grant, for the $330,000 for the purchase of the property, as long as the federal housing mandate of keeping it as a, as a, um, a home for the community that, and the Chester Y house fits that need till uh, 2018, we won't have to pay that money back. So every, and everyone's satisfied that, that that will be taken care of. So there, and there's no requirements on the payback of that. The second CDPG grant, which we received, uh, that we had expended about $186,000 on the design for the Haven, for Haven House. Out of that $86,502, the state had already reimbursed us for because the CDBG grant is a reimbursable grant. We expend the money, we send them the invoices, they pay us back. And they came back to the county and said, listen, you, you know, the, the design you did for the Haven House is not the same design you're going to be doing for the new house. So we want that money back. You know, we want the money that has been expended to date back to the state. So the, the county uh, refunded $86,000. The other $99,000 that had been spent, they just didn't reimburse us for. So that's money that the county had used. 
Um, but that <laughs> left a remainder of money that could be used for the Chester Y House, which $670,000, and the state had said, you can utilize that money. Uh, the Chester Y House fits, fits all the federal requirements. Uh, so as long as you commit to demolishing the existing house and building back a new house, you can utilize those funds. Oh, sorry, went too fast. So this is a perspective of what is being proposed, and there's some boards back behind Paul uh, at the back there. So <clears throat> it shows the house. It, uh, it's a residential home. It looks like a residential home. It fits into the neighborhood much better than the other facility did. This is a, a two perspectives from the uh, side as you drive in the driveway, which is the top one with the fireplace, and then the uh, front of the house. An overall site plan of the house. State Street is there on the right. And then a layout of the house. It's a one floor home. There are four bedrooms uh, plus an office and there's 24-7 uh, um, management at the home. So it will, there will always be management on staff or on site. It's about a 3,200 square foot home. Like I said, four bedrooms, three baths, uh, laundry, office, kitchen, storage, everything that, you, that, the, that the residents would need to, to live in the home. Uh, accessible housing needs will be met. It's 24-7 staffing. Chester Y is licensed by the Office of Healthcare Quality. Individuals can live in the house for as long as they desire. There's, there's no requirements for them to move on at a certain age. It is their home uh, that they get to stay in as long as, as long as they so care. Chester Y has very low turnover. I think Deb will probably touch on it, but I think they've got eight or nine homes in the community now uh, throughout the county with, with little or no problems. The staffing is in place for both developmental disabilities and, and mental illness. Uh, behavioral specialists assure appropriate plan and support. Sports are in place. And Chester Y is working collaboratively with the architect, who is here tonight, uh, to ensure that accessible long-term home for residents. Uh, we have a video that we're going to play, and I think Deb has a few things to say before we do that. Thank you, Greg. The uh, video that you're going to see is, was done at our day program, and uh, we support about 52 people in our day program and 31 people actually living in the nine residences that we have throughout the community. But I wanted to, um, and I will put my hand up when I want you to really pay attention to a very quick um, uh, example of what we're wanting to put into the home. What we're really wanting to, to real look at is, is supporting some people that have pretty significant physical needs. And so we're wanting to put tracking in the homes so that the people that we support are going to feel safe when they're moving from their wheelchair to their bed, to the shower, to the toilet. And so there is one example that we have uh, uh, from our day program. And so when I, I, you'll see it, I'm gonna put, your hand, put my hand up so you'll understand a little bit of what we're talking about. But I think it's a pretty cool video. So let's take a look. <laughs> Hello, I'm Deborah Langseth and I'm the Executive Director of Chester Y. Very excited to be here. We have a lot of things that Chester Y is doing to support adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We support 62 people in the community. We support folks in the residence, in their homes, in the day program, on their jobs. We have people that are working in the community, like Safeway and we also have people that are working on various work crews and being involved in the community. Hello, I'm Wheeler Baker, chairman of the Chester Y Foundation. I'm also sit on the, the Chester Y operational board. Been involved since 79. Time and time again, the local community has come behind us 
100 percent. They're whatever we need, they're there to help us. We're talking about a, a new home down at State Street. The county has been generous to make this proposal and done some engineering and, and we'll put a house down there and I think it's quite appropriate and I think it would be an asset for the community. They'll probably four individuals, you know, they'll they will bus them to and from. They can actually live like we do, they have a porch area, lay on the porch, whether in a wheelchair or move around by themselves, enjoy their life. I'm Barbara Nash. I've been on the board of Chester Y for 40 some years. Quite a long time ago, a mother called me one night. She was in the hospital and she said, I'm dying and will you mm, take care of my son? I'm going to leave the house for his care. Well, I said, I'll see you tomorrow, but she passed away that night. And the next day, we found out that we would get the house and we would get Bob. And we just make sure that our clients, above all else, get tip-top care. That they are taken care of, they have the clothing they need, they have the, their room decorated the way they like. We just put a lot of time into it. So what we have, we have worked for and we deserve. Thank you, Queen Anne's County. Thank you, Queen Anne's County. Thank you. Thank you, Queen Anne's County. Thank you, Queen Anne's County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I didn't raise my hand to say there it is. And I think it's because we've edited this thing so many times to keep it short that I missed it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you, Deborah. I also want to thank Deborah for the cookies there at the <laughs> back of the room. So uh, she made some cookies before she came today. We're going to go through real quick on a few of the next steps. <clears throat> we'll get input back from this informational meeting tonight. There'll be a public hearing on April 26, which is the next commissioner's meeting at 630 at the uh, 107 North Liberty Building, second floor. That'll actually be followed up with the second uh, commissioner's budget meeting and the uh, constant yield hearing. Commissioners uh, can sign the resolution naming Chester Y as a sub recipient to the grant at April 26th if everything goes well. And the county of Chester Y will enter into a long-term lease on the property. We currently work with the Chester Y on some other properties. Uh, so we'll do a 99-year lease with them and we'll finalize building plans and, and put out a bid for the construction. Hopefully by late summer or early fall, we'll, we'll get moving on this. The Chester Y is in need. You know, they have showed that they, they have a need. They had a fire at their facility earlier this year. So there is a need to get some housing up and going fast. We've worked, the county's worked for years with the Chester Y. We uh, help fund them each year through a grant to their facility. We have purchased vans for them over the last few years, so so it's really a good working relationship and, and we're happy to we're happy to be able to work work further with them. Like anything there, so so that does conclude our presentation. As I said, it was gonna be short. So we're gonna open it up to comments. We're gonna keep our public comment period uh, pretty casual tonight. It's going to be more of a question and answer. If we can answer them, we might not be able to answer them, so we might have to get back to you. So there were sheets to sign up on at the front. So I'm going to go off the, the list we've got here. I'll read my little spiel. I'm going to have Margie keep the timer. Uh, I'm not sure we will need it tonight, but I have her keep it anyway. So I want to thank you guys for coming out and expressing your views during the public comment period of this informational meeting. Uh, comments, we would like to keep them to three minutes to, in length if you could. If they're a little bit longer, you can submit, it in write, submit them in writing to us. Uh, we do ask that uh, you know, any views are expressed in a civil manner. Uh, we, the commissioners respect your right to convey your message freely, but asks as a courtesy to our commissioners and our citizens that you refrain from name calling when offering critique. And I also want to remind you that this is videoed and aired, so it'll, it uh, will be 
uh, up probably within a few days. And I want to welcome Commissioner Steve Wilson, who walked in a little bit ago. So, Steve, welcome. So with that, I'm going to start on the list. The, stand, the microphone is right next to, between Steve and Mike there. So just come on up when I read your name. And the first name on the list is Dan Richardson. I'll just be a second. I just uh, wanted to, my wife and I were pretty um, vocal to the commissioners about other plans. And we just appreciate the openness for this to help our uh, fellow county residents that need a, a helping hand. And uh, just wanted to thank the commissioners for their uh, open view on this, this going forward, and we think it's a great idea. Thank you, we appreciate that. Okay, uh, next, John DeVette. I was also pretty vocal about opposition to Haven Ministries, and I'd like to say thank you also for listening to the community and, and taking our input. Um, I also think Chester Wyatt is a really great opportunity for this location. Um, I didn't think I'd have anything negative to say, and I don't want to be negative about this. I do have a question about uh, uh, mental illness and, and what that means at this location. I really expected Chester Y was more disabilities and developmental dis disabilities. So if you could educate us as to what the difference is there, I'd appreciate that. Sure. Is that ready to go? What's good? Hello? Try, try again, yeah. Hello. There you yes. go. Yes. Okay. So we do not expect people. This house is really going to be designed for people that have some pretty significant physical disabilities. When I had indicated that we support people that have a dual diagnosis of a developmental disability as well as a mental health component, that's throughout Chester Y. That's, that's, we're not intending that for this house. Um, people might um, have challenges with regard to expressing what they want to say, and so they might be grunting or they might be, you know, getting their elbow or maybe pushing something. That, I think, is about the extent of what we're going to see with regard to some aggressive behaviors. I mean, we might see somebody purposefully rolling their wheelchair over somebody's toes, but that's, I think that's about where we're at. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. That, that got a laugh out of the back. So. All right. So <laughs> I guess what I would like to do is introduce um, some of the Chester Y board members who are here. So you've already met Wheeler Baker, who is the chairperson of the um, Chester Y Foundation. We also have Jack Smigo, who is the chairperson of the Chester Y Board, and um, Bobby Ann Nash, who is the founder. You saw Bobby Ann. <laughs> Bobby Ann has been with us for a long time. We are very glad for that. We've got Lillian McNeil, who's one of our board members. Sally Hoyt, the board member. Uh, am I missing anybody? Mark Dubell, who is also one of our board members. And um, we have David South, who's on the foundation board. And we also have um, some of our staff who are here. So if you're a staff person, we've got Janet Akers, Kathleen Baker, um, Joy Starling, Sean Giles was over at Sean's right there. And we have two people that we support that came. We have PJ, who you saw a lot of in the video, and we have Sharon. Um, so they're both um, able to be with us and do a lot of, of fun, fun things. Um, so we're very glad to be here and to be able to uh, talk about what else is happening. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Deb. So next we have Mike Rinaldi. Thank you, Mr. Todd. Uh, my name is Mike Rinaldi. I live in Stevensville. Um, I, I appreciate the hearing tonight very much. I want to take a second to uh, really thank the uh, commissioners for uh, not only for listening to the community uh, as far as 
finding appropriate use for the property, but also in their strong efforts uh, to be transparent in the process going forward. Um, I've seen uh, great effort on the part of the commissioners and the staff in that regard. Um, Mr. Anderson went out of his way to, to bring uh, plans for the house so the community could see them. Um, I've seen, uh, I believe it's uh, community relations and faith done a terrific job p uh, promoting this meeting. Uh, I don't know how anybody in town wouldn't, wouldn't have known about it. It's fantastic. Uh, the maps were great. Uh, the emails were great. Um, down at the library, there's a big poster. So I, I can see that I want to thank the commissioners for really making a commitment to, to local government and the will of the people. Um, I also wanted to say I was pleased to pick up the phone and, and have a couple conversations with uh, Ms. Langseth from Chester Y, and I want to say how impressed I was with her uh, professionalism and her excellent communication skills, uh, willingness to address questions and learn about the community. Um, we had a couple very long talks, and uh, she kept asking me, "What questions do you have? What what else can I you know, what else can I tell you? Uh, every conceivable topic." and uh, what I've learned for, about the organization, I've been very impressed. I've seen many of the homes for myself. Um, I've talked to people that have worked with Chester Y. I've talked to people that have lived near Chester Y homes, and I don't, I don't think I've heard a bad thing. Um, so personally, I think this particular facility is a great fit for this lot. Um, the, the design of the house looks fantastic. It's going to be an asset to the community. Um, I guess I, Greg, I had a, a question about the, the grant hearing coming up. Yeah. The, uh, is that a, I mean, is it a, like an, what do you call it, amendment to the grant that's going to be signed? Is there, is there paperwork that's going to be submitted that the public can see before that uh, hearing? Yeah, there will be. Yep. Okay. And we'll, uh, we'll get it out to you. So. Okay. I, I think you got an email from me with a couple yes. of questions. Yep. Right? And it was just in the interest of, some people have said to me, um, you know, this sounds terrific. Uh, how do we know this is going to be what right. the county's working on uh, and how long will it last? And I said, well, you know, maybe if we can see what the grant paperwork says and just say, here, here it is, this is exactly what you're saying to us, which I, I believe will happen. And then I guess my other question was about the site plans. Will people be able to see those when they're drawn up during the uh, review process at all? I know people were wondering about yeah, that. Yeah, I know you had asked about, uh, mm -hmm. about it going back to the Planning Commission, and we can ask the Planning Commission if they would okay. like to hear it, so that's that's okay. fine. We want to... and. I know there are some some thoughts about rezoning. The one thing we don't want to do is is get too slow on it, though. Right. I don't want to hold it up. Right. So maybe that could even be done after the app fact. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. That's not. Yep. That's not my intention. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Um, but things to look at as far as uh, you know, peace of mind for people who have questions about sure. future use. I mean, everything I hear here, you know, as long as the paperwork matches that, of course, that's what people have asked me right. to pass on, and I and I, um, I'm excited about. You know, them coming here. Um, I want to thank the Department of Housing also, uh, your employees, and uh, I want to, on behalf of a few of my neighbors who I know are excited about, I want to welcome Chester Y, the board, and uh, your residents and your employees to the community. And I, we'd really like to know, Deborah, what the community can do to be involved. So if you please keep in touch with us, uh, we'd like that. Um, I guess and to add on to that, if you maybe we had this conversation, I said, why is it why is it a good idea to put this house there near the near the park and the trail? Is that some are those assets that that your residents could use? I think that we'll definitely want to be able to use the to be able to go to the park. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you were initially concerned about, oh my gosh, it's going to be so noisy. The ball games are going to be, and it's like <coughs> great because that means that we can actually go to the ball game pretty easily and uh, to be more involved in the community. Um, we will be developing a list of volunteer activities that we would love to have some support from the um, community. You know, one of the things that happens is that oftentimes, and I can't speak for the people that are going to be moving in this house because we haven't identified them yet. But one of the things that we do like to do is to make sure that people have a family. Not everybody that comes and receives services and supports from Chester Y has a family. So, you know, to recognize people on their birthday, to say, hey, have a happy Thanksgiving or Christmas, um, different ways that you can be involved in the neighborhood in a very 
low effort way on your part, but it'll be important for the people that we support. So um, we'll continue to be developing some lists of things that you all can do as well. Sure, keep us posted mm -hmm. through the process. That'd be terrific. Great. Steve, you'd like to help too, right? Right, okay. So uh, thank you for coming to Stevensville and, and doing this hearing right here. So anybody who wanted to could attend and for putting it on TV and the, the transparency aspect of it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So, Thanks, Mike. Janet Akers. I was just going to add some extra support if any of the community had any questions or anything. I've worked for Chester Y Center for 40 years, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. I am so pleased with all the support that we're getting from the community, and I know it's going to work. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, she is a newbie. 40 years isn't, uh, <laughs> isn't very long. So if you've ever been around Chester Y, you definitely know Janet. I do want to take a, a second to, to thank... I, Kim, Kim's hiding back there. Kim Craddaville's here from Senator Cardin's office, so thanks for coming out. And Donna Swartz is here from DHCD. I, I think I saw her too, so thank you very much for showing up. <clears throat> Next on our list, uh, I think we have Steve Pringle. Steve? Well, well thanks. I think everything I wanted to say has been, been said. Um, as you, if, if you can't tell by now, we're a pretty close community. Um, we have a lot of intercommunication amongst ourselves. Uh, we always kind of pick on Mike, say, Mike, I don't have time, can you send this email for me? So a lot of times when you get a message from Mike, um, Mike has polled a lot of us and gotten our opinions um, and, and, and tries to speak for, for us. And we appreciate that out of Mike. Um, he shared with us, you know, all the lovely communications he's had with you. Um, again, to the commissioners, to the county, thank you for the transparency, as these, uh, as these folks have already mentioned tonight. We've been through a lot as far as this property goes. Um, I don't know if you know the whole history, um, but uh, it's been uh, quite a quite an interesting last year, and there were a lot of questions, you know, as to you know what is the Chester Y, and um, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to have you come to our community, and uh, as as Mike and some of the others have said, um, we'd love if there's anything we can do to continue to show our support uh, for what you're doing, any volunteer work that you need, um, let us know. We'd love to sign up. Um, I'd like to either confirm or dispel a rumor that I've heard, and you know what they say about rumors. I, I don't know where this comes from. I don't know what truth there is, but someone did approach me and say, well, you know, um, I don't support the Chester Y coming here because, and I'm just going to throw this out there, um, in the past, the uh, Queen Anne's County has given Chester Y a house, and there was some talk of a, a, a bunch of buses or a bunch of transport vehicles, and all of that uh, was donated to Chester Y, and that somehow disappeared, that money's never been seen, and those, you know, again, this could be completely out there, um, but I thought you know I'd bring it up and ask you you know have you have you had support from Queen Anne's County in the past uh, with a project like this that that hasn't worked out and if you could address address that. Excellent. It's on the record now then. It's <laughs> untrue. So um, I will have a conversation with the individual that I spoke with about that. I'm not stirring things up. Fully support, fully support what's going on. But again, um, if I can be helpful to help dispel some of these things that are going on, I'd like to do that. Miss Nash, can we? Oh, oh, oh. Time out, time out. We got to get it on the record. So <laughs> you sit down, I'll bring it to you. We love Stevensville people because that's where we got our start. We were in the old White House restaurant donated by the Board of Education for $1 a year, and it's where, right outside the old Far House. We were there for 10 years, so we love Ken Island. And for the first time in all those years, we were getting $20 for a cake back then because people loved us so much. So we well, love Ken Island. That might seem small to you, but at that time it was a lot to us because we didn't have any money. <laughs> well, I mean, none. <laughs> Welcome back. And I don't bake very well, but I'd, I'd be happy to beat that price and sell you some cakes. I'm going to hand off to Wheeler. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'd, I'd uh, like to address just a couple things. Um, first of all, thank, thanks for the county for your support. This is great. Whenever we need help, you're there to help us. It's wonderful. But I'd, I would like for everyone to know that back in the 80s, we came up with a, we approached the county about a piece of property, and, and they, in fact, gave us a 99-year lease. And we, we have two homes on us down Gravel Run Road like you going to back to the dump at Grayson Mill. No problems. We own the buildings. We own all of our houses. 
This is the first one the county's ever going to own or build. We've done all this ourselves. Quite frankly, our organization, we, we're like every other organization in the world. We're trying to help people. I always say, but for the grace of God, there's me. You know? So we want to help these folks. And uh, it, I can't say enough for for our people, the, the staff, the volunteers, the board members. But you, you get a quality entity when this comes to you. So I think you'll be happy with it. Thank you. Thank you, Wheeler. And what date is the auction? <laughs> What's that? They want to help out. What, what is it? October? It should be in October. It's a great auction, dinner and auction. OK, next we got the Paul Lombardo. Paul? <laughs> I like my friend uh, Steve here. <laughs> Uh, I have two things. First of all, I talked to Deborah earlier today, um, based for the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, um, it's important to have a, a painted sidewalk or pathway from their facility to the trailhead, a lot of state truck traffic there, I'll make sure people can get there safely. Second thing is, I bought my first house in Queen Anne's County in 2001, right across the street, 123 Gravel. Never had a problem. I live now right behind the new site. Welcome. <laughs> okay, thank you. I do want to, uh, Mike touched a little bit earlier on thanking Faith, and, and I really want to, I really want to thank the, the commission as a whole to get Faith where she was in the, in the new position. When, when, when this term came in, you know, we had five brand new commissioners, they inherited the Haven House project, and all the confusion and all the um, lack of knowledge and and all of that that came with it. And so when they came in, they said, listen, we really need to focus on how do we get, how do we get the message out to people? How do we make sure that the citizens know what we're doing? And so we put faith in charge of community affairs. And now I think everyone in the county knows what we're doing. <laughs> so she's done a very good job. So I thank her for that. And I thank the commissioners for really supporting her on that because it's a, it's a critical, critical position in this day and age. We, you know, we hear a lot about how can people not know what's going on because there's email and there's text and there's all that, but that makes it even harder sometimes because in the old days, you put in the paper, everyone read the paper, so people knew what was going on. People don't read the papers much anymore. Sorry, Mike. So, you know, we need, we need to, uh, to be able to reach all those different, you know, Twitter and email and Facebook and all that good stuff, so I thank her for that. Um, that's all I had signed up, but anyone else is welcome to speak if they want. Come on up to the mic and state your name and we'll get going. I'm Sharon Harlow, and I think everybody knows that I've been pretty involved in the Haven House project as well as supporting Chester Y. And our times have changed a lot since the inception of the project, and there was no social media and email and all of that. And it's wonderful that it's working in a positive way this time. I only have one question that may not be able to be answered, and that's who's going to retain the deed on the property. Yeah, the, the county will retain the deed, and we'll just and lease the property to them. For we, we typically do 99-year 99, 99 leases. That's my question. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay, anybody else? Yep, come on up. I'm Aloise Demuth from Chester. I was very involved with the um, prior project. I'm so glad that you have done something like this that everybody can get involved with. It sounds wonderful. So thank you very much. Thank you. Sure, after, uh, at, right after this young lady, and then you can hop up there. Hi, I'm Kathy Dubell. My sister-in-law is Sharon Dubell, who lives at Chester Y. I just want to say that Chester Y has been a wonderful organization. The people there and the families and all of the workers and all of the clients are wonderful. And to the person who mentioned mental illness, I just want to let you know, one out of five people in this country have mental illness. You probably live really close to some of them in their own homes. So if they do did have mental illness, they're going to be taken care of at Chester Y. Thank God for that, because there's a lot of people that don't understand mental illness or developmental disorders. And thank God we have Chester Y. Thank you. Thank you. 
And I'm the one in five in my family, so just so you know. Mike? Uh, uh, to what uh, she just said, I think actually John may have asked that question to get the answer on the record for other people to hear. I would, I'm pretty sure John actually understands that. Right. Um, and that's, uh, I'm going to ask a question for the record too, because sure. people have asked me. Um, there's $670,000 to spend. And the question is, you're going to build a ranch house with $670,000. And I've talked to Deborah about what the money would be used for, but maybe somebody on the record could say, why would this cost that much? And, and what are we getting for our tax money? Is this a worthwhile use of tax dollars? Are there special facilities being built? Or right. Go ahead. Things Deb. like that. Yes, it is going to be a special facility. As I had indicated, I was trying to point out on the video, <laughs> the house is going to have tracking throughout the ceilings so that people really can be um, lifted from their wheelchair into their bed, into the shower, into the, onto a toilet seat. Um, that's going to do two things. One is, very selfishly, that's going to mean that we don't have so many workers' comp claims. But more importantly, it's really going to help the people that we're supporting to feel safe during those transitions, because um, I'm sure if you ask Sharon and, and PJ, they would indicate that it can be a little challenging to, to just be relying on staff to hold you and make sure that you're not going to slip or fall. Um, so that's, that's one component of it. Another component is that we're looking at the kitchen, the bathroom, um, and to make sure that the sinks are at a point where the wheelchair can go in, that you can actually get in and use the, the sinks and, and faucets. The countertops will be lower. Um, there will be lower countertops for the people that need to use a wheelchair. There will be a regular, typical countertop for others that don't. Um, so it, it'll probably go like a little step. Um, we're going to have as many built-ins as possible. And by having um, a built-in like dresser or built-in area for a bed, that's going to mean there's more room for maneuverability of the wheelchairs. Um, you know, we do have nine homes at this point. And while they're, they are accessible and that they have a little bit wider halls and they have wider doorways, they get pretty cramped when you try and put a wheelchair in there as well as a bed. And, and for us, because we do not have the overhead, we also have to then include what's, uh, what's considered a Hoyer lift, and that provides the, the ability to move people. Um, so we've got the changes in the, the kitchen, we've got the changes in the bathrooms, um, we've got the built-in tracking, Obviously, we're wanting to have additional things put in for accessibility. Two other things that we're doing. The house is going to be sprinkled. Not only, thank goodness, is that a zoning thing, but we are just coming through a fire. Mm -hmm. We are so fortunate that we were able to get all four of the men in that house out and the staff person. We are so pleased to be able to have a sprinkler in the house. The other thing that we're going to have is a generator. Part of that is for the heat, but another very important part of it is that many of the people that we anticipate will be living in that house will require hospital beds. And part of that is that the hospital bed may or may not um, have a special cushion that has to have air flowing it through it all the time to prevent pressure sores. And um, so that's another reason we need the tracking, because people um, will be, be repositioned every hour or two to make sure that they don't get pressure sores. It's, it's a very important component. Access, the, you know, the ramps leading up to it, a nice wide porch so that people can actually be outside waving to the neighbors. Um, the, the sprinkler, the, um, the tracking, and the um, generator are all adding a lot to the, the cost. 
Um, we are so thankful. We are so very appreciative to the county for its, um, its a commitment to Chester Y and the people that we support. So. Great, and, and we appreciate uh, the county and, and the state working together to, for this great use of the property. And, and again, I, I hopefully we won't go home and see on Facebook uh, something about people having you know fears about the clientele and, and and what have you because of what was said. I just want to make clear. I, I know Steve and John actually have some expertise with some of the issues that they brought up, and th that there are, uh, from what I can tell, we I mean what you've told us. There's there's no real concerns about any, any security concerns in the neighborhood at all. I just wanted to put that on the record, and we've had long discussions, and I, I want you to know that. It didn't come up here because there wasn't a concern. Right. And um, I just want to make sure we're, we're excited about this use. We think it is appropriate for the property. And, well, yeah. it's funny because when I was talking with Mike and he was asking me about security concerns, I turned it back to him and I said, you know what? We're going to have staff in this house 24-7. And when staff get off of their shift, at 11 o'clock at night, are the staff of Chester Y going to be safe walking to their houses? He said, of course, it's a safe neighborhood. Yay, that's the sure. answer we're looking forward to. <laughs> sure, well, so, we look forward to meeting them and, and yes. being of any assistance that we can. Thank you very much. We're very appreciative. OK, anybody else? Come on up. Hi, I'm Carol Fickinger. I uh, also live on Love Point Road, neighbor of Mike's and neighbor of New Chester Y. Um, I just want to thank you for, um, again, the county, and we are really looking forward to having you in the neighborhood. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, come on up. I'm sorry. Thanks, Mike, for reminding me of this. Again, welcome. W glad to have you. I haven't heard anything negative out of the community. Um, and I just want to, for the record as well, for the news, news folks that are here, I always seem to be the guy that, um, after 50 people have spoken, I get one quote. There's one quote in the newspaper, and it's always me, and it's a negative quote. There's no negativity here tonight. So I, I want to see nothing but positive things, um, you know, when this comes up. Right. <laughs> so... Okay, thanks, Steve. Anybody else? Commissioner Wilson, do you have anything you want to say, or are you good? Just wanted to mention that uh, Commissioner Bucky wanted to be here tonight, but he's in a fire meeting tonight, and I want to thank Wheeler Baker, who's been wonderful in this board and a great asset to our community and a great friend to all of us for years. Thanks. Okay, with that, it's not... Oh, go ahead. I was trying to get him out here before dark. So you got like five minutes. Uh, every cake has to have some icing. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, outpouring of welcome is so important, but this is going to work two ways. Uh, I was retired for a pretty long time, and one of the things that I did, I was an officer of one of the local service organizations who used Chester Y. Uh, for uh, the cleaning service for the interior of the building. And I always look forward to opening that building and being involved with uh, the folks. And I tell you, you will have a much more enriched life looking, acting with, interfacing with these wonderful people, because I did. And um, you are like me. We have an opportunity to really make something work well for all of us. And I'm glad this worked out. And when staff brought this idea of uh, a facility for Chester Y, it was a brilliant idea. And I knew it was going to be a brilliant idea because I knew the folks. And not only is it great for us, but this is going to be used as a prototype for this type of activity, not only in this county, but for other counties around the state, because the governor's taken a, a look at this through his secretary. So the good that is spawned here is going to carry forward in many other places, and that's a credit to the people in this room, you, the folks out here. So let's make this work. You're really going to really love it. Thank you, Commissioner, and thanks everyone for coming out. Don't forget to take two handfuls of cookies because Deborah made a bunch. Oh, abs absolutely. I, I, I
I need I need to get a mic. So there you go. Come on up. son in Chester Watt and he was 89 and she was 83 and they wanted to go to the western shore and go into one of the retirement villages they wouldn't take their son so what they decided to do they wanted to make sure John was happy with Chester Watt and then they would make their move because they felt they would pass at any time all three have passed since then but this is the dilemma that a lot of parents have we can't just go in any retirement village with our people it's a shame, but that's the way it is. If we put them in the hospital sometimes, they're calling us to come get them right away. If they come in nursing homes sometimes, we're called to come get them right away. We do our job, and we work very hard at it. And we understand our people, and we have kept many until they passed away. We have done that. So Thank you, Barbara. Us. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think she deserves a hand. So. So with that, I'm going to wish everyone a, oh, I'm sorry. I have business cards, so I'll be, I'll put them up by the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everyone for coming out and eat a bunch of cookies and be safe. Thanks. Thank